since all the updates were coming out, you know what I mean? So since everything that's been coming out since he's been, you know, giving signals and everything like that, so I'm doing a lot better now. It's a huge relief, you know what I mean? Like, the, I think the worst part about, like, everything is the unknown, you know what I mean? Like, us not knowing, like, his status or anything like that, which everybody did a great job of giving us updates and everything like that. But, you know, just as a player, as that being our brother and him being so close, it's just like, you know what I mean? You're just wondering, like, is he going to be all right in the end? So, like, once we got updates and once we got, you know, feedback, you know, it just started to make us feel a little better, for sure. I guess I would ask you the same question in terms of, Yeah, I think it's just been one of those fluid situations. Um, the team's done a great job of kind of keeping us in the fold before, uh, you know, unfortunately before you guys. Um, so uh, for us, like, you, you know, we get into Zoom updates during the team meetings, which were awesome. It's really cool. Uh, you, you don't realize how much you need that until it happens. Um, it's just been such a fluid situation. The, the information sharing throughout the departments has been phenomenal. And uh, we've never felt like we were behind in that department. So um, in, in, the, in those regards, we were very thankful for uh, everyone doing you know, the best they could uh, with something that was you know, so volatile and just kind of changing at the minute. Nick, Guys, what was your reaction to uh, Tamar's dad? 2007, I was on the field uh, with my teammate, Kevin Edwards. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it was just, it was one of those things that um, we were kind of writing the script on it as you went. Um, you know, everyone had different sorts of information. Uh, it's, you know, it was kind of chaos at any given moment. When we were able to get to that locker room, I think uh, a lot of things happened. One was we were able to collect ourselves and help each other out in the confines of that locker room. Uh, also have the whole team in a confined space that uh, we could have discussions, conversations, not only between ourselves, but then, you know, coach putting us in a position to ultimately make a decision. Um, yeah, I, I just think it, it, there was no way in hell that we were ready to go out there and play a game. Um, you know, even if there were just a few guys who weren't ready to play, which there were way more, you know what I mean? Uh, you can't, to play this game, as you know, the where you have to be mentally to be on the field, not only for your, yourself and your well-being, but for others around you, um, it, it just would have done a disservice to everyone, and, and there was just no chance. So um, we're very thankful for that opportunity and uh, kind of collectively come together and, and do that. Mitch, if there was no way in hell that you could do it then, how can you fast forward six days from then if that and, and do it? Yeah. Um, not only the updates we've gotten from the family, uh, from the medical staff, um, also just processing, you know, naturally processing this, getting, you know, with family, teammates, um, just taking it moments at a time. You know, you have dialogue with yourself as well. Uh, and through that, um, I think the biggest thing is just hearing from the family and hearing how he's progressed has really put... Uh, I mean, to say a smile on our faces would be an understatement. We were we were as elated as you possibly could be as a team. It was it was a really cool moment, um, and then being able to put the pads on or you know being able to do a little bit of football today was very therapeutic for a lot of guys. And and uh, you know it's still one of those situations that we'll keep going, progressing. Each person, like Coach said before, is going to kind of process this in a different manner. Um, and that's nothing wrong with that. You know, emotions might be delayed. Emotions might hit you at different times. And, um, you know, we're just there for each other. And, and everyone here has got a really good support system. For, for both of you, just what you just said, Mitch, be there for each other. Can you define kind of what that means? I, I, one of the images that's burned in my head is Tredavious White, just like put his head on your chest. I mean, you're, you're consoling a teammate at the worst possible moment of his time. And, and for both of you, just how did you, how do you, how are you there for each other? What are, can you share some of those 
I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I just feel like it's like it's the bond we have, we've all created. You know what I mean? Like every day in the locker room, it's never a dull moment. So like it's it's just with everyone. You know what I mean? We're always all here for each other. Like if it's about like anything, it could be about anything. You know what I mean? We're always you know what I mean? Are you okay? Like we're around each other so much. Like we notice the smallest change in your your behavior like every single day. So like just that bond that we've built over the time. You know, it just give us. That you know that that advantage to just be there for each other every single time. Like tough times like this go down for sure. Hey, we heard from the doctors today, and they said that the first thing Demar said was, "Did you win?" Mm. What's your reaction to hearing that? I mean, I really wouldn't expect him to ask anything else, honestly. You know what I mean, because like, uh, I just know like just what type what type of person he is, man. He's a true warrior, man. He's a he's a fighter. Uh, he's always going to he's always going to come out, you know, with, with some type of joke or whatever. No matter the, how severe the situation is, he always has a joke. Or you know, I know the first first thing he'll say to me when he get back is something crazy. I, mean, I just know it. I, I can't wait for it. Honestly, that's what that's what I'm really waiting for. But you know, what I mean, that's just the type of person he is, man. He's all he's always wants to win. He's a true fighter and he's a warrior for sure. Yeah, well, Uh, I mean, uh, I just, I just remember, I just remember, like, as I, as they were putting me into the, into the, uh, the, the ambulance, uh, him saying, "I love you, D Jack," and like, like I just remember that distinct voice. There was a, uh, the whole team was saying it. You know what I mean? But I, I just, I just remember that distinct voice in my head, and like that, that replayed with me on the whole way to the hospital. So, uh, you know, just. Those different, just the bond we have. Like I, I, I look at pictures now to this day. Again, this is not about me. You know what I mean? This is all about Demar. But like I just look at pictures today, and I see him standing like right there, like literally like hovering over me. You know what I mean? As I'm, as I'm getting carted off. So like, that just goes to show you like the type of bond that me and him have, and uh, just how we're always there for each other. Mitch, yeah. what, stand, Mitch what stands out to you about the leadership of your head coach in those moments, and now uh, that you've had a couple of days to process? Uh, what stands out to you about Sean? And then, Dane, same question for you. Just, I mean, which we knew about Coach before is humanity. I mean, the the fact that, um, you know, he's here to coach football. We're here to play football. Um, he's here to delegate certain things to, if you want to call subordinates or whatever. But when it comes to player safety, our personal lives, uh, he's been unwavering in this. But this is kind of, you know, in the most paramount time double down on it was just the fact that he he's he he's a human being um, he has our safety and and well-being uh, in the forefront of his mind at all times and uh, you know when the stakes were at its highest not only you know for football but for a young man's life that uh, you know there was no thought about football rather than and rather just the welfare of his team and of course tomorrow can you take us back to the locker room and this, maybe the discussion, or how did it come about that you understood that no one was going back out there that night? Yeah, it was, it was so fluid, kind of just like we had talked about earlier. It was, you know, it was kind of chaos in the field. Um, we got in the locker room, emotions were still very high. Uh, it was, it was still a very um, an emotionally charged area. I think guys were just consoling one another. And kind of having this open dialogue, uh, we were kind of coming down a little bit, still processing everything. Um, you know, it, you know, I feel for the guys in the defense and stuff. You know, you know not only is this you know, in their position group, uh, they were there, they were on the field. Um, so every position group, every person who's got a different relationship with someone in the locker room is feeling this in a different way, and that's not a bad thing. It's just the truth of it all. Um, you, know, you you see guys who are just you know were almost inconsolable and then you ask them to perform at the highest level at a sport where you have to be mentally and physically have your wherewithal to to not only play but to put yourself in a position where you're not going to injure yourself further so um it wasn't like one person standing up kind of saying this thing it was really uh a back and forth between the coaches the players and and uh um 
you know, it was pretty cool to see. Maybe that's the second time you've said that in the news conference about having the wherewithal and the focus, not even from a win-loss perspective, but uh, essentially you can tell yourself and protect yourself others when during the course of an NFL football game. In light of everything that's happened, and Sean and Josh talked about, you know, essentially the message that if DeMar would want you to guys go out, go, to go out and play, uh, how difficult is it to achieve the level of focus now that you need to to prepare for something? Like I said before, you you know, it was, it's been so fresh for these, you know, 48 to 72 hours. Um, you know, everyone's got their own conversations with themselves and their loved ones and you understand as football players you assume risk on the field but you say that and then something like this happens of course you know it's going to shock you to the core um, but then you have that you, that guttural and visceral reaction visceral reaction rather you take a step back um, you think about it kind of just uh, objectively and, and then you also hear like I can't say how paramount it was to hear from DeMar and his family or you know, DeMar's family and the, the medical staff and um, that really has shed some light, and uh, you know, like I said, being on the field today, having guys, you know, it, it was just it felt had some normalcy, and, and I think that was very therapeutic. Since you've been here, this organization has really prioritized mental health and making all the resources available to you guys and the entire staff in the building whenever it's needed. How important has that been, and how is it going to continue to be? And how can you guys support that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think. Um, you know, we, we had talked about some people only pray when the when 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 something bad's happening, or some people only seek uh, you know this psychological help when things are at their most dire. Which sometimes is 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 the thing that thrusts you into that and realizing that there's a whole next level in your life, or as a team, or as an individual that you have this help. Uh, he's you know, coach and, and their staff has been uh, very, I think, forward thinking in that regards. Uh, something that I've personally been very uh, grateful for. Um, yeah, and it, it was no surprise when he had all these people here at our disposal. Um, I think you, you, you know, Dan can attest, uh, you have 90 different guys in this locker room processing it in 90 different ways. You're going to have people who process it certain ways, was verbally, intrinsically, um, through hanging out with people by themselves, talking to someone. So uh, there's no right way to do it. And uh, I think to just to be able to have that opportunity well, it was really cool. It, it seemed like Seth uh, took a, made it a point to be with you while, while everything was happening. How important was he in while, while everything was unfolding? Right I mean, it was very important. You know what I mean? Uh, he just made sure he was by my side, you know what I mean? Because he knew how, uh, how significant our relationship was, you know what I mean? So uh, he just made sure he kept reaching out to me, uh, checking up to me, as well as everybody else on the team did as well. Like a lot of people know, you know what I mean? Our, our history and our background. So uh, a lot of guys were coming up to me and, uh, you know, just making sure I was good, you know, just checking on me for sure. So I appreciate that a lot. Dan, how long you've known DeMar, like you just referenced, a lot of people are getting to know him, a lot more about him for the first time. Is there a story or something you want people to know about DeMar from all the time you've spent with him? I mean, I can't think of a, just of a story. There's so many, there's so many. I mean, we, so many times in college and stuff like that, but, uh, just as just a person as who he is, man. He's a he's a giver, he's a a fighter, he's a warrior, um, he's an encourager. You know what I mean, uh, just a whole just for one thing, like his his Chasing Millions Foundation. Like, man, that's big. I remember like even going all the way back to college. You know what I mean, where he wasn't allowed to you know what I mean be on the forefront of it because he was in college. You know, where his dad had to take most of it. But like, it's just that's just always what he wanted to do. You know what I mean? He always wanted to give back. He's always wanted to help. Uh, he's always like looking for the next opportunity to just be a light to someone who's willing, who wants to be in our position. So like, just that's that's just him. You know what I mean? Like, just thinking of it makes me smile because I know once he gets back to himself, like he's he's going to be looking forward to helping out so many others. Speaking of the foundation, to follow up on that, just knowing and knowing the community that he gives back to so much, are you able to kind of imagine what it might be like for him when he realizes, you know, how much money has poured in? Yeah, oh yeah, I know, I just know he'll be like super excited, you know what I mean? Because like coming from where we come from, you know, uh, that's where he, he does most of his events and stuff like that. So like just coming from where we come from, I know like it, there's a lot of people who aren't as privileged to 
You know what I mean, just, just, just get the basic stuff. Like, we just did a toy drive. Like, a lot of those kids maybe may not have had toys, you know what I mean, if it wasn't for that drive. I mean, I don't, I don't know uh, exactly, but, you know, I just, that's just stuff that he's, he's, like, willing to do and he wants to do. So I can't wait to, to see it happen. Speaking of the foundation, just what has it been like from your perspective to see the millions of dollars from people across the country donating to, to support him through all of this? Yeah, I mean, it's just been great for me to see, you know what I mean? Because, like I like I referenced before, I just know, like, he's going to do so many amazing things with that, you know what I mean? I just know that, like, he, he probably has no idea about it now, but, like, once once he finds out, you know what I mean, how much money that was raised and how many people support him, I, I know, like, those thoughts are just going to start going in his head of what he can do to help out others, you know what I mean? It, it's never about him, you know what I mean? I can tell you. From my heart, just knowing him, that I know that he'll do a lot of great things with everyone that supported in this foundation for sure. Yeah, Sean, you can't be in 60 living rooms of your teammates, but what do you think the conversations are, are like and have been like this week with players and their families? Um, it's been great. I mean, I don't know if it's totally fair to speculate uh, what other guys are going through. That's not fair. Um, what I can assume is. Um, you know, just I know early on those first 24, 48 hours, I think guys spent time with each other. That was huge. Um, processing it out loud, especially guys who had gone through it together. Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't know how to totally answer that question. I, I assume that everyone's kind of going through this uh, shock and awe at first, kind of having this some huge emotional come down. Um, and then kind of analyzing it in their own way, thinking about it, and and hopefully, uh, you know, working through it. Mitch, you know, we all know that Coach McDermott is just the ultimate player's coach, and you know he's always finding a way to find some inspirational motivation to say to his team. What has been his message to help you guys cope with what has happened? Yeah, I think the the coolest thing about this is that more than anything, his vulnerability has been huge for us. Um, you know, this, this sport at times can be such a macho, tough man thing. And I think when you look at this team room that we no one had any macho left to give. Uh, we were all just trying to uh, process this together. And, and I think he was just such a good figure to um, kind of see how he was coping with it, his vulnerability, his emotions at times, which he had already t spoken about kind of gave us the opportunity to just let our guard down. And I think that's the biggest thing this whole time is being able to let your guard down so you can heal and without having any wall to uh, to hold you back. And then you've obviously been emotionally driven and so up and down. You just took us through what the last few days have been like for you. So what is it like in your meeting rooms now as you guys are preparing? How are you staying focused? I know you guys are Yeah, I think, you know, Coach McDermott's been talked about a lot. Um, you know, the assistant coaches have also played such a paramount role. Uh, like I'd said before, each position group might be feeling this differently. Everyone's feeling it. There's no doubt about it. But some, it might have touched home a little bit more with some position groups than others. Um, I think when you, when you start game planning for the Patriots, you open up with just like echoing what Sean's message was at times, which was, hey, if you need a moment, it's cool. This is, this is uncharted territory for all of us, and um, we're here for each other. You know, this season has been kind of, it's been a roller coaster of a season, not only as a community, but as a team. Um, you know, nothing can quite, you know, live, no, I don't want to say live up, but reach what this has meant to us. Um, but, you know, let your guard down if you need it, um, and guys will be there for each other. Major, in the nature of the NFL, is it in any week of the season, Every player's first priority is normally the game that's upcoming. This week, you guys have that has not been your priority, and now you have to shift gears to prepare for a game. Can you talk about just kind of going through a week as an NFL player where that isn't your number one priority? Just what that experience has been like, and how you balance everything you've been feeling as you as you try to prepare for Sunday? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it has been a week like in like you know no other. I don't plan on ever having a week like this, and I pray to God I never do. Um, 
we're just figuring it out on the fly. I mean, the, the fact that uh, there's a game coming up Sunday is is a blessing in a little bit, and at the same time has been daunting. Um, trying to balance both being a football player and your emotions and just kind of being a human being living in this moment. Um, I'll tell you Monday how it goes, because uh, we're still kind of figuring it out. Dan, I have a question about DeMar. Um, he had to step up in a big way football-wise this year. Um, can you tell me what was, how did he approach that? What was his attitude about it? What did he say to you about his expanded role? Uh, well, I could definitely say he approached it like a pro. Uh, you know what I mean? Every, every single day he came in with the mindset ready to work. You know what I mean? He never hesitate on asking questions of older guys like Micah and Poe. Those, were, those guys were always in his corner. You know what I mean? Lifting him up every single day like he make a play or something didn't seem right. And those guys are right there as soon as he come off the field, you know, giving him pointers or whatever it may need to be, I mean, whatever it needs to be. So. Uh, he definitely approached it like a pro, and uh, I can't wait to see him get back out there, if, if, that's, the, if that's the case. Dan, you guys go back, you know what I mean, since, since Louis, right? And, you know, he had that message for you, and, you know, when you were going through what you were going through, I love you, D. Jack. The floor is yours now. What, what is your message to the Miners fan? Uh, my message is that um, I'm going to always be here. You know what I mean? Uh, no matter what, no matter the situation may be, if it's good, if it's bad, or if it's in the middle, I'm always be right here and doing everything I can to help. You know what I mean? Uh, I reached out to his family, doing whatever. I wanted to be there at the hospital with him if, if I can, but you know what I mean? That wasn't the case, but still, no matter what, I'm going to always be here. I'm going to be a brother to him. I'm going to be uh, a friend to him, uh, a friend to his parents, or just any anything that they need from me, I'm here for him for sure, 100%. Dane, we heard from the doctors earlier today, and they said that they wish that everybody had parents like DeMar's parents, and DeMar has expressed how much his family needs to him and, and how they had him when he was young, and, and they've just taught him so much. You know his parents. Mm -hmm. What are his parents like, and why are they so special? Man, they're, they're very special, I can tell you that. I mean, they're super strong. I mean, just look at everything that they went through in the past few days and you know what I mean I, I don't think I've seen a tear out of either one of them you know what I mean so that just goes to show you how how strong they are and I know they're super supportive I mean I don't I don't remember a game that they haven't been at since DeMar wasn't even playing you know what I mean like when he wasn't playing they were still at the game still travel and they're they're always there like he's always making sure he makes it a point to go see them I mean he's probably gonna see them right after the game but it's just special because like when you're on the field at that moment, like, you know what I mean? Like, and you got your mom and your dad over there, you know what I mean, just waiting for you to come over. And like, it just gives you, it just gives you a little more, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just a special moment. So like, they're, they're bond and like, everything that they do together, it doesn't go unnoticed. And as well as his little brother, you know what I mean? His little brother plays a big role in his life. And I know how much his little brother means to him. And I don't know how much he means to his little brother. So I can't wait till their relationship, get, relationship gets rekindled as well. Yeah, I think everyone will be looking forward to getting that first snap out of the way. Uh, I think just in a regular game, there's nothing more nerve-wracking than the national anthem. Just your, the adrenaline's high, your, the anticipation. Um, now, that might be speculation, and it might just be me. Um, but I, I think, you know, of course, the fan outpour, no doubt, will be tremendous for DeMar and for this team. And, um, you know, I think once we start getting into the flow of it, It'll feel like football again, and I think people are really welcoming that, um, hopefully, that, that experience. And, and if some, some people don't feel that way, it's okay. You know, it's just one of those things that we're just going to kind of ride the roller coaster, uh, per se, and see, and see how this plays out for a lot of guys. And um, it'll be kind of an ever-evolving situation. Hey, Mitch, it seems like right from the jump, you kind of jumped into the role of being a source of strength, whether it be for Trey on the field or even how you're just – talking about the situation now. I guess two part. One, where does that come from for you? And two, have you given yourself time to process it yourself? Yeah, I think you're giving me more props than I probably deserve in this <laughs> instance. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a twofold thing. You can't hide the emotions on the field. Um, 
you know, part of me wishes that that moment between Trey and I was in the locker room. Um, you know, part of the, you know, I don't know if it's fair to either of us for that, but at the same time, it, it did show the world that how, you know, what kind of situation this was. Um, so it's a double edged sword uh, because the stakes were so high that you, you guys had no choice but to, uh, you know, find their true emotions uh, just because that's a brother on the field for a lot of these guys and for all of us, you know. So um, I'm just trying to do my job as, 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 a, as a guy on this team. I, don't, I, I think there's a lot of guys who stood up in, in a way that, even if they're not captains, played such a paramount and pinnacle role in a lot of guys coping with this. And, um, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, even after this game, it's not going to be, you know, a snap of the finger, we're all good. It's going to be one of those things that we kind of grind through. And um, if anything in this, you know, this season has just been a one after the other, this kind of domino effect of, of things that bring a team together. And this is just one of those, another one of those moments that, um, although the stakes at its highest, uh, will just be one of those things. Well, whether wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I could tell you that. You know what I mean? Uh, just the way this team has come together. Not even just supporting me for, forget me. You know what I mean? Just the support of everyone. You know what I mean? The support of the players, the coaches, the families. Uh, I mean, my family at home are getting text messages. You know what I mean? Uh, just just wondering how he's doing and everything like that. So just the, the support of everyone. Uh, just the way we've all come together. You know what I mean? The, nobody pointed fingers. Nobody. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, got they just it was just a, a total amount of support from everyone, top to bottom. Can you share that story about someone in the ambulance showing that he loves you? That's a you know, very powerful moment, but it seems like he's been doing that all the time about telling guys how he feels about them. Mm -hmm. Do you know when he started to realize that about DeMar that he's good at expressing that to people, just his care for other people? Oh yeah, I mean, it's been like that it's for since college, you know what I mean? Like every time we left each other, or every time we would go on the field, like before in, in pregame warmups, we're always like finding each other. It doesn't matter what moment it is, but we always make sure we tell each other we love each other, like before the game. So like that's just been in his character, and I'm sure that has a lot to do with his mom and dad. You know what I mean? The way he was raised. So I mean, it's it's, it's as much as I can remember, it's been like that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.